I'm very excited to introduce you to Venus Next, the first major expansion to terraforming Mars with some new mechanics. Firstly, a look inside the box before we get to how this might affect strategy. First thing we've got is the Venus board. This has another terraforming track, however it doesn't need to be completed for the game to end. It has a couple of bonuses that you can see here, and a couple of extra city places. You can use a standard project, air scrapping, to terraform Venus if you don't have the correct cards. The game comes with a bunch of new cards, most of which are project cards, but there are also five new corporations. Along with a pretty Stronghold Games card, we've got all the different um, projects here, mixtures, of course, of actions, events, and regular projects, with the new Venus tags, and, uh, if I find one somewhere, uh, the new floater resource, which can be added by various actions and used for various effects. Finally, a new milestone, Hoverlord, and a new award, venue file. So now, onto the strategic aspects of Venus Next. The corporations available with Venus Next are fairly interesting. Morningstar Incorporated and Celestic add this interesting new mechanic, where your first action is to go through the deck, picking out either three or two cards with the specific tag that you're looking for. Um, all the rest of the cards get discarded. I suppose this is interesting because it means you're guaranteed to start with a couple of cards that are likely to work well with your overall strategy. Morningstar Incorporated, a branch of Inventrix, uh, adjusts Venus requirements up or down by two, whereas Celestic, um, a corporation based around floaters, has an action that's able to add a floater to any card, and if you don't have any cards that collect floaters, uh, you can just add them to Celestic and you gain victory points. Aphrodite uh, can challenge Ecoline, as it has its plant tag and its plant production, and um, whenever anybody terraforms Venus, you gain um, two mega credits, a small disincentive for other people to, ter to terraform Venus. Um, Manutech is a fairly generic company, starting with some st steel production and money, its gimmick being when you increase the production of any resource, you gain one of that resource. Viron, which is very interesting and a very flexible company, starts with a good chunk of 48 mega credits, and its action is to use a different blue card's action twice. This might work well with card draw, or animals, or whichever blue cards you happen to pick up. Aside from augmenting other strategies, the major strategy in Venus revolves around floaters, which are resources that you add to a card just like an animal or microbe resource. There are two cards that accrue victory points for floaters. Stratopolis, which gives you one victory point for three floaters, and Floating Habs, one victory point for two floaters. These cards also let you add floater resources to themselves or to other cards. Other uses for floaters include terraforming Venus, which you see here with these four cards, increasing your mega credit production, increasing your energy production, or using floater resources to pay for other Venus cards, as you see here on dirigibles. Venus cards interact pretty well with a science strategy. To begin with, Venusian Animals will give you an additional point for every science tag played. You won't be able to play it very early because it does require 18% Venus, but it's a nice bonus. Extremophiles provides a new way to get additional microbes on other cards, requiring just two science tags. Atmoscoop gives you three points for only 22, approximately seven each, not too bad. Dawn City 
Um, it gives you three points for just 15 money, requiring four science tags. That's a pretty good deal. There are several cards allowing card draw in the Venus deck, in particular sponsored academies. This gains you a net of two cards because you have to discard one, but your opponents also get to draw a card. That's not too bad if you think about it, and it gives you a point as well. Atlanta Plenitia Lab, with three science tags, lets you draw two cards and gets you two points. That's really quite good indeed. Finally, Aerial Mappers lets you add floaters or use floaters to draw a card. Card draw is pretty important in the science strategy, and this is worth a point as well. That's an obvious buy. The Venus deck augments the Jovian strategy. Firstly, it adds a handful of new Jovian tags in the form of Atmoscoop and IO Sulfur Research. I haven't mentioned IO Sulfur Research yet. This lets you draw one or three cards depending on your Venus tags and is worth two points. It gives you another way to integrate these two strategies together in the form of Hydrogen to Venus. This card lets you put one floater on a Venus card for every Jovian tag you have, which can be quite a big points bonus or allow you to use the floater cards more efficiently. There are several of these cards that require Venus, Earth, and Jovian tags, which can be quite interesting. This one gives you two TR, this one gives you some steel production, and this one gives you some points. There's a small amount of mega credit production, and there's some card draw in this way as well. The Venus deck adds additional wildlife cards that can augment your usual wildlife strategy. Stratospheric birds in particular adds another one victory point per bird card into the game that's available at only 12% Venus. Similarly, extremophiles will collect points, Venusian animals will collect points, and Venusian insects will connect points. Then there's the handful of usual cards that will add additional microbes or other wildlife resources to your cards. Sulfur-eating bacteria is slightly different. You can use its action to add a microbe to the card, or to use the microbes and gain three times that amount in mega credits. Maxwell Base and some other cards with this question mark resource on it can act as any resource. Therefore, it could probably be used to uh, add more Venusian birds for extra points or other resources and floaters as you need them. Similarly, there's thermophiles adding microbes and using them to terraform. Then there's a handful of cards that add um, plant and animal and microbe resources in other ways.